So hi everybody, um, I guess you probably didn't expect for me to do a little bit of a product um, interview, but this is Jed from, is it Brazos or Brazos? Brazos Walking Sticks. From Brazos Walking Sticks, and um, part of the reason why I wanted to do this was because I know I've gotten a lot of comments with, from people about the trail, about really liking my walking stick. I've actually had people ask me if I made it myself, which is flattering, but I certainly <laughs> did not. Um, so I happened to be, it was sort of only a short, detour to get from here from uh, Austin to Amarillo through here so uh, I called uh, the folks up over here at Bra Brazos Walking Sticks to uh, just see if I can't do a little bit of interview take some photos just to let you guys know about how it is that they do and, and like I said to you guys uh, just before off camera that I really like kind of appreciate you guys the company you've done some like custom work for me uh, in terms of making the stick um, sort of up to what it is that I wanted to so I just wanted to kind of ask you, like I said, what your, if you could give a little explanation about the, the company, uh, the history, and just sort of you guys' process, I guess, in sourcing, curing, sure. and creating those sticks to people's orders. Okay. So. Well, I don't want to take too long. Yeah. That, there's a lot to that, but um, I'll start out with how we started the okay. company. Actually, my dad started it uh, the year I was born, so in 1996. Oh, wow. um, we were doing currently a lot of picture frames and he had worked with wood for years before and uh, the opportunity kind of opened up. One particular account wanted to make, uh, wanted us to make uh, what we call our hitchhiker. We still sell it. Okay. Um, it's an oak stick. It actually doesn't have anything to do with the saplings. Mm -hmm. And so we started making that, um, making that stick and it just kind of grew from there. Before we knew it, we were stopped doing the picture frames and just did the the walking sticks and it's just grown year by year. Wow. Um, so a lot of our first accounts were with uh, national and state parks. And that's still a really a staple oh, with us. Um, same with, uh, um, you know, mom and pop stores, a lot of the hardware stores, a lot of the gift okay. shops uh -huh. has been kind of the core of our business is mm -hmm. having a lot of those accounts where we're making them for those. And of course, back in 2001, I think we did our first website and yeah. that was back when the websites were still kind of new, but we yeah, had a yeah. friend that did some of that. And that's been a key part of it, what you were saying about the custom stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, we have a number of craftsmen working for us. Um, actually, at the moment, about 24. Okay. Uh, we have some in-house, and those that are working in-house mm -hmm. um, love doing custom stuff. Okay. And uh, so we're able to do a lot of interesting. Yeah. We've done sticks up to, you know, seven feet tall wow really <laughs> we've done shepherd's crooks we mm -hmm. of course made you know made sticks for uh morgan and the walking dead oh really movie. i didn't that, know that. that he is that that cedar stick wow okay we've made uh you know stick for moses in a broadway uh, really show and okay but a lot of just funky in between stuff where someone wanted a different tip or someone didn't want the twist here mm -hmm. and wanted a different kind of wood or a different this and um so we love when we're able to, we're able to oh, okay. uh, help out a customer in some specific uh, way. Let's talk a little bit about the where we get the wood from. Mm -hmm. um, we source the raw saplings. You can see yep. kind of behind us. Yep. I'll just grab uh, a raw sapling here. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is pretty raw. Uh, this is what we call hickory, um, and we get these. We have uh, folks in New York and Arkansas uh, primarily. Also some come from Virginia, um, from the hardwood, hardwood forests. And uh, we, have, we have contractors basically that work closely with uh, the local timber um, organizations. And what they'll do is, these are obviously saplings. Mm -hmm. They usually come up around the larger trees. Okay. Um, so, in, in, in harvesting timber uh, sustainably, they'll go through and they'll uh, clear cut somewhere or go through somewhere that has been clear cut. They'll plant trees. Okay. 
So those trees will come up, then about 20 years later, they'll come and thin the trees. Mm, okay. And at that time, uh, the, the trees they want are, you know, about six inches in diameter. Mm, mm, mm. There's a lot of saplings about this size that come oh, okay. up around the trees. They come and cut out about half of those small trees anyway, and then all the saplings. Mm. So we work right with the timber companies and come okay. right before that thinning process to cut out all the small saplings. Okay. Then they come through with the equipment and they will, uh, you know, clear and do the thinning. And we can also come in right before they do the primary harvesting, you know, okay. when, the, when the hardwood and, and pine trees are about a, a foot in diameter. Okay. Um, and so those contractors work closely with those, the specific um, uh, companies in that area okay. so that we can come in and not make a big impact wow. on the local uh, scenery and get, and get sticks that would just be uh, oh, it's going to be thrown away just otherwise. Be thrown away. Exactly. Oh, wow. Cool. So we bring those sticks um, into our uh, facility here. We only cut during the winter, mm -hmm. so that the sap is already down. Okay. That also helps the bark hold on to the um, to the inner part of the wood. I don't know if we can see on one of these. I'm just going to show the camera here. If you see the the outer layer of bark. Um, so obviously this expands every year to allow for more wood to grow in the middle. So during the winter, that bark is much tighter locked onto the core of the stick. And that's an important part of the aesthetic of our freeform sticks. We call our freeform sticks that have the bark on there, the saplings. So we harvest in the winter, we bring them into our facility, which you can see behind us, we're in right now. And um, we will let them dry out. We have airflow and such. And also because we're bringing them in for multiple uh, states, we will fumigate them. Okay. Uh, basically, it's you can get stuff at Home Depot, but because it's sealed, yeah, it, it works well, uh -huh. and that guarantees that you're not going to have bugs yep. eating your sticks when it's leaning up against the wall. I gotcha. And um, also just for different regulations and such. Sure, sure. Um, so we store them in here, then air them all out, and then from there we take the sticks, and as you can see with this one, it's mm -hmm. pretty crooked. So we'll show you maybe in a second. We, we go and steam them. We heat them up in a, a, con a contained uh, apparatus okay. where we steam them. Then we can straighten out the crooks in it. Wow. We can grade for size, for length, for all the different aspects. And uh, then that product, well, that component really will go to our local craftsmen. Okay. We have about 18 of them. And it's, they're all kind of within this. So we're in Waco, Texas, just exactly. like, so it's in the Waco area, essentially? Yes, sir. Okay. So about within usually 30 minutes, okay. five to 30 minutes okay. of here. And so they'll come every week and they'll pick up their order. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, that enables them to work at home, mm -hmm. work their own schedule, mm -hmm. and be a little closer to kind of the craftsman mm -hmm. uh, cottage industry model yep. that uh, we've always loved for years from, from starting this company. Um, and so they pick it up and then they bring back the finished product and we'll show you in a second Great. Uh, where we store all those sticks and then we ship them out to y'all. Great. Um, if, if there's any custom orders or such, uh, they'll come through me and a couple of craftsmen back here where we'll just take and do that specific order. We'll come and pick a, a specific walking stick to meet specific needs and yeah. take it and finish it through. Well, that's great. And I was going to say that um, I didn't know that, like you said, you had more of a, like you said, sort of a little bit people go, working out their own sort of places out and that kind of thing. But I did remember that when I first got this, there was a, I think there was a little tag with the specific, like a picture and the specific name of the person who actually made uh, right. the stick, which was like impressive to me that, you know, like, you know, you kind of have a little bit of a sense of, you know, never met the person, but at least who they are, that there's a real human being on the other side or yeah. whatever, who kind of um, helped make this walking stick, which I've been using for I think maybe about two years now. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good compliment. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, let me think. Maybe, yeah, like I said, we could do a little bit of tour. Like you said, you could show some, we could show some of the finished product. I was also going to say, um, uh, give a compliment, like you said, the sort of custom work. I didn't know that it was uh, also a little bit of part of the company, like you said, that people, that you're com comfortable taking custom orders and things like that, which, um, I, you know, I definitely respect, you know, because uh, I just found you guys on the internet and you never know necessarily how big or small the company is, sure. that kind of thing. Um, so for those of you guys outside, if you are looking for a walking stick, um, one of the things that is great about this company is, like uh, Jed, you were saying, is that you're 
you, you can find these sticks in many different parts of uh, the country, I guess, that you kind of have uh, contracted out with the, right. with the parks and things like that. But if you did want something that was really made more for you, then um, you can come here, you can give them a call like I had done for you guys several times. In fact, when I first got this, I actually asked you guys to shorten it and also to put this, uh, the trekking pole tip on it, which is, um, like I said, uh, I didn't necessarily expect. Uh, I'm glad that you guys offered that service and have that, like I said, sort of a little bit more of a cottage sort of feel to things. Um, anything else that you want to kind of comment that makes uh, the, the company unique or things along those lines? I'm sure there's other stuff I could say. We, right. just, we just try our best to make a quality product and it really, what you mentioned about the craftsman is a, a very key aspect mm -hmm. about it. We, we talk often among ourselves, you know, this may be one stick mm -hmm. in a hundred for us making it. Yeah but this is the one stick that our customer is gonna buy and just keeping that connection mm -hmm. uh, very close of, we are making products to use, to mm -hmm. be cherished, to, to be useful for many, many years um, and we're really proud of that. So that's a, that's a very core aspect about what we're doing. You caught us midweek, so it's a little messy. It's fine with me. You, you know, you didn't ask. You didn't ask to go know where I live. My room's a giant mess right now. So you guys are probably doing better than I am. So this is what's called the super steamer. This is a custom uh, steaming box that we made, um, and we have water down on the bottom of here, and uh, flames uh, confined underneath it. That produces a lot of steam. We'll stick the place the sticks inside and that steam will penetrate into the stick and will loosen uh, the fibers. If you picture the wood kind of like a big bundle of straws okay. going upright yep. and they're bound together with the, the cellulose and mm -hmm. the different uh, things. So when you heat it up with steam, it becomes flexible, not quite as much as a noodle, uh, but you can, you can bend it a tremendous amount. You can, you know, pull the top around into a crook neck. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's called once you break the wheel of the wood, mm -hmm. you can take it and you, you flex it down and you flex okay. it up. And once you've done that, you've broken the wheel of the wood while it's steaming. You have about uh, 30 seconds. Okay. And you can shape it different ways, straighten oh, wow. it out, whatever, right. make it crooked, and whatever the case is. How long so do you that's need? The first how long do you guys need to kind of steam it for? For you know, on average, I guess, in order to, for it to kind of be compliable. Sure. Mm -hmm. Usually, it will stick. You know, maybe. 50 sticks in the steamer and okay. let them be in there for about 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. So then you pull it out, you got about 30 seconds, and then those those will settle okay. and all those fibers will pull back together okay. and tighten up and uh, good to go. If we're just straightening the sticks, we will use the um, just this on the side. Okay. Just able to use. Um, your arms kind of coming down, it's real nice, it's real close to be able to see whether it's straight, it's real close to the line of sight. Yep, yep. Um, if we're doing what we call the shepherd's or the crook neck cane, yep. it'll steam it slightly longer and we'll take uh, we'll take the stick and put it in this jig. And, uh, oh, interesting. We'll use this wheel and such to bring it around in a circular fashion like that. We'll put a wire around it to hold that because you're bending it so much more, yep. you've got to hold it in place. For about a day before you let the, the wire off to make it make sure it's set and a couple hours to a day oh great so get done okay so this is an extra tall stick um it's actually we'll cut it down a little shorter it's a bandsaw and i'm just going to cut some of these nubs off to start the process of shaping it down smooth All these nubs, but they're really just small branches where the leaves were coming out, the small limbs. All right, so that's a start. We got a much smoother stick. Okay, I picked a pretty straight stick. This has already been steamed, sure. Um, so obviously, it just takes a while to get that heated up. And stuff. This is one of our fine craftsmen, Jacob. He Hi, does Jake. a lot of the really Hi. fine exotic sticks and really nice. Nice stuff. I cut this down to size in this saw. So there's the chop saw. Many of the tools we use to make these sticks and canes 
are very common tools. Mm -hmm. You can easily do a lot of this at home. Um, and we often even send raw sticks out uh, to customers who want to make their own sticks if you're inclined and have some of the tooling and such for that. So. And uh, as you may have seen on our website, we have a, a um, we partnered with a YouTuber and uh, made a, he made a little video about how to do a paracord wrap handle. Oh, cool. A lot of our customers too, they'll make their own paracord lanyard, uh, hand strap kind of thing. So it comes out of here and it'll be a little bit wider of a band. So it'll give a little more support. Uh, while they're walking with it, a lot of different customizations. Um, you know, of course, we put the you know thermometer and compass and different things in there for you know, just depending on what you want to do. So. Mind if I show them how to make a stick real quick? Give me a few minutes. So this is what we call a drum sander, and I'm just going to quickly uh, go through the steps we go through to make this into a walking stick. I'd normally have a mask on. For the sake of the video, I won't, uh, but that is important so we're not exposed to dust all day, every day. So. so I've rounded over the top. Now I'm gonna make the handle. See that nice contrast coming through the bark? This process of doing two circles in the middle part makes the middle of the handle bulge out, which makes it uh, more comfortable for your hand. As you can see, it's a little bit irregular because of a knot right there and a little bit of a knot right there, but that also makes it just kind of fit in the hand really nicely. So. I hit the little notch that cut off the bandsaw. Get all the bandsaw marks out. Then I'll do the uh, kind of our signature twist. Also known as the barley twist. So it goes all the way back to 4,000 years ago. We have uh, evidence of it. It's a very common, uh, it was an architectural feature in old temples and shrines from way back, and it's made its way back into uh, furniture and Brazos walking sticks. So, uh, all the way, also, this is the same. Uh, it shares the same roots historically as like the uh, the barley twist, like picture your cinnamon twist mm -hmm. that you get at the donut shop. Yeah. Uh, that's also tied in there with it. So random trivia. So this is uh, this has the basic design of it. I was using a fairly coarse grit, so the next step would be to take it to a finer grit, and then we will coat it with our uh, pre-catalyzed lacquer. Make sure we kind of seal the, the beauty of the wood. But that's the basic process. So we spray it and then tag it and stop. We're gonna put whatever kind of tip we're gonna put on it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's kind of the, the fundamentals of it. Wow! Thank you so much for walking me through. This is our mascot is stick. So this is this is for real men, right? I gotta here. back. I gotta back up. I can't <laughs> actually get this into frame. That has got to be what, like you said, seven feet, seven and a half feet. Well, yeah, it's actually over seven feet. Yeah. Lower. Yeah. So, is it so, just having fun? We take it to shows sometimes, just for oh, that's great, just mm -hmm. for that kind of And you guys do like you said, you guys do shows in other parts of the the country, or, or to kind of like uh, feature this, or we do. I mean, we go so for instance, we're in the Ace and the Blaines and the okay. uh, True Value, so we go to yeah. those yeah. specific yeah. shows. Okay, and sometimes we'll go to the outdoor retailer um, show. Oh, great! Um, so we'll take it just for yeah. the fun of it. It's funny because this is yeah, it's like maybe two twice two times the size of a regular one. Another, even the I was say, even the tag I know that I I still have is what five times the size of your regular tag. Another you piece know? of trivia. Yep. 
There's my dad and there's me. Really? Long time ago, so obviously there's a lot more people in the company who just happened to get me today, but uh, yeah, that was when I was a short little kid. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. Uh, so these are the finished products here, right? Right. So this is the place where the uh, local stick makers will bring their finished product into. Okay. So this is yet to be put into our inventory wall, is our back inventory. So, for instance, uh, one of our stick makers works in a very limited space and so uh, he completes his sticks but then they will get sprayed in-house so that he doesn't have to expose his little area to the mm. to the spray because you need kind of a special yep. facility for that um, then you know this is just all the different guys you can see these are all individual craftsmen mm -hmm. each of these different bins that are bringing it in mm -hmm. uh, here's canes here's free form there's a lot of our cane stock up here you can see some of the more fragile woods that dent and scratch. We put those in plastic bags. A lot of these other ones are incredibly tough, like the oak. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're just they're incredibly strong, uh, so they're not they're not going to get damaged. This is a bunch of walnut canes. This is a bunch of shipping tubes mm -hmm. ready for uh, shipping out the product. Yeah. This is that hawthorn mm -hmm. I was speaking to you of that uh, has that cool yellow mm -hmm. uh, yep. vibe coming out of there. You're saying that, yeah. Yeah. Do you mention the uh, the diamond wood, right? That yes. you wanted yeah, to you get a picture of. Or so here's more sticks. There's a bunch of the, the finished root canes I was speaking of. Oh yeah. Um, so those are pretty cool. Let's let's go in here to the main inventory wall. So I have to get our ladder. Reach diamond wood. Diamond willow. Excuse me. Sorry. There is a diamond wood that is quite different. <laughs> So, this is the Diamond Willow made by Joseph Kendall. And uh, you can see just the very unique diamond patterns. Uh, and the Diamond Willow also uh, definitely are going to have a lot more character. You can see the kind of the jogs and wow. uh, such. But some people really like that, that the story, the story with it. Um, all the way on kind of the opposite end, we've been talking a lot about the free form, is yep. something like uh, we get this um, exotic, this is called Coca Bolo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work with a fellow who actually planted these trees uh, over 40 years ago on a, on a personal plantation um, because you can no longer harvest this, obviously, from the wild um, because it's a rare species, mm -hmm. but the stuff that is planted specifically for harvesting, we use that. Um, so you can yeah. see it's just a gorgeous wood. Yeah. You got all these different yeah. uh, type of fun fungi that makes these uh, very interesting yeah. lines. And the variations in the color. It's, and a, it's a type of rosewood. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of towards the upper end of our, um, of our canes. We have very playful mm -hmm. color wood, we call it. And this is basically a one directional plywood. Mm -hmm. So in other words, all the... Unlike plywood you buy from the hardware store, uh, where the, the grains are going in multiple directions, all this is still layers of veneer, but all the grains go in one direction, so it, it acts very similar to wood. is actually stronger than wood, mm -hmm. but they also dye it fun colors. Yeah. So some people really like that as a, as a statement. We have a, what we call hame tops. Oh yeah. And uh, this actually comes from. Uh, the, the, the specific design has been adapted from hames that used to be on old leather harnesses for draft horses. Mm -hmm. And right on the, on the collar that they pull from, mm -hmm. there would be two brass hames where you could throw the reins over when you go to park them and such. And uh, so <laughs> somewhere along the line, we didn't actually originate with this, but folks started using these for canes. And that's really cool. It has a, a nice feel in the hand, something sturdy. A lot of folks use this if they're walking and they're afraid of neighborhood dogs or something. They just feel like they have some protection mm -hmm. from that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, all different kind of designs. This is a fitness walker. And uh, what's unique about this is it's a little bit lighter weight. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty trim model, but specifically this handle, kind of like a, a snake almost, um, it allows yeah. for like four different types of grips. 
So say you're you know Nordic walking or speed walking, as you call it, or yeah. exercising with two staffs. This gives you multiple grips to use and not wear out, you know, be uncomfortable in your hand. So for those doing a lot of walking exercising, this is a very popular one. All sorts of stuff. We go on forever. And the woods are primarily sourced in the U.S. or sourced, uh, the, the, you said they for were? For sure. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. obviously our main sellers are the yeah. hickory and the free fruit, the sassafras and the sweet gum. Uh, of the lumber sticks, the sticks made out of lumber, such as the fitness walker I just showed you, or our, all our canes. This is made from uh, oak, sourced from uh, Callion, Arkansas. And uh, pretty much, yeah, except for the rosewood, mm -hmm. except for the rosewood, the Bacote, just a, a handful of woods, all the rest of them are domestic okay. hardwoods. Okay guys, so that was Brazos Walking Sticks. Um, thanks so much to Jed and everybody else who let me film here. To those of you guys who are actually watching out, um, now whenever someone asks me where I got my walking stick from, I can refer them to this video and tell them that they can, they can get one custom made, they can get them in a whole bunch of other places that Jeff was mentioning. Seems like a really nice kind of place, a good, good business. Uh, before I even sort of saw them I, uh, here in person, I, I definitely felt like I, I wanted to at least uh, get a chance to say hi. So I'm glad that I got that opportunity. Yeah, I really appreciate the kind of work they do. There's some real good craftsmanship that goes into this. And it's, it was really nice to just get to know how these things are made and even who makes them and um, the whole process. So I hope this was interesting for you guys. And I'll catch you guys on the next part of this long journey that I'm on.